Hello and welcome to Patch. I'm your host Paul James. Today I'm joined by Matto Phillips. How are you, Matt? I'm super. Well, depending on super, you could be the world's biggest dickhead at the moment. Congratulations. Square Enix. Square Enix, there we go. The the through line of our episode today. We are talking about the recent sale of a shit ton of stuff from Square Enix all the way over to the Embracer group. Let's call it a fire sale because it was in gaming purchases it's cheap. A steal. That's a steal. It is a steal. Well, it's a modern day steal anyway. Ever since the Insomniac thing, everything's kind of changed. Um, and yeah, it's a bit of a steal. So yeah, I guess if we kind of summarize everything for people... Three hundred million dollar US dollar, I should uh, should, should add, but uh, three hundred million dollar deal between Square Enix and the Embracer Group, which people are hearing more and more of in recent months and years, thanks to their purchases of Gearbox and they've got Volition from uh, of Saints Row fame, so they'll obviously put out a new yeah, Saints they Row were. soon. Yeah, I didn't realize they were THQ. called Nordic. They were Nordic at one stage. Yeah. Yeah, they they'll remember that. It's like, oh, they purchased all the THQ stuff back in the day when THQ went bust. Yeah, and then magically they resurrected. Huge. They have before yeah. this before this Massive. sale, they have fourteen thousand game developers and more than hundred and twenty studios or something like that. It's insane. They must be doing something right, unlike Square Enix. It's remasters yeah. of old games at the moment, so they just keep oh, there the remasters because they're just they're surefire sales. So it's a good tactic of theirs at the moment but yeah they've, they've gone and picked up um, from Square Enix uh, Crystal Dynamics Eidos Montreal and well, there's a Square Enix Montreal in there too yeah I think there was two Montreal studios and and um, uh, Crystal Dynamics yeah as well Next. as and I think the thing that's maybe caused the the greatest amount of panic things like Tomb Raider Deus Ex uh, Gex the all important Gex, Gex uh, Gex. Legacy of Kane, a whole bunch of other Western IP that basically, I guess, Square Enix hasn't really cared about. But there was no mention of the Marvel games. No, or anything no. about they, 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 they definitely retained the. Well, they never really owned the license. They licensed it in the first place, so they can't really sell a license that they picked up to another company. That's a fair point. So, um,. Yeah, there's they've they've sold a whole bunch of really famous IP and some pretty big studios. Keeping in mind that Crystal Dynamics is currently working with Microsoft on Perfect Dark, um, for three hundred million dollars, which is barely any more than what Sony bought Insomniac for. That was one studio. They sold they, several studios and a whole bunch of IP. Then they bought Bungie for what two billion? Yeah, three. Yeah, th- something three, like that. Three point one or something like that. And they, I actually saw and they a made today one. Apparently game. that. Um, one of the governing bodies in the US is just starting to take a bit of a look at that whole bungee thing. There's a bit of a crackdown on all these game industry purchases at the moment, so it'll be really interesting times for all this stuff going forward. But but yeah, um, 300 million is not a lot, as you said before. No, and it's also surprising too that it wasn't purchased by Microsoft or Sony or PlayStation. Microsoft can't. That's a, not with the Activision Microsoft thing. They, they're stuck. Yeah, they've, they've run out of money. They just... They all haven't run out of money. They just... Maybe it's just those European Union people of just looking at Microsoft going, just you, no more buying for now, you. <laughs> Settle the fuck Phil. down. Settle down, Phil. That's enough. What You've about got too many studios? What about what Square Enix has put the money to? Did you catch up on that part? Yeah, it was no fucking tokens, NFTs. Yeah, I saw that, and congratulations, you went into the market when it just went. <laughs> Yeah, and the next day, and I think I, I shared it on Twitter, there was a stat that came out that showed like how things were progressing in the NFT space, and it's yeah, not uh, very good uh, at nothing, the moment. Yeah, so nothing like a good 92% drop from September. Every, everyone, uh, you can tell, most gamers hate the things. No matter what, every sort of tweet I see is mostly gamers going, No fucking thanks. No, don't, don't be stupid. You idiots. Yeah, but and they're, they're leaning into it. They seem to believe in it. Good luck to them, I guess. Yeah, good luck when you uh, go out of business. But it does set up like a really interesting thing. And we, obviously we referenced Insomniac, we rest, referenced Bungie. You can talk about Activision, you can talk about Bethesda, you can talk about all the other studios that have kind of been picked up in the last few years. It makes it hard to kind of gauge like what's the value of a studio when you get a sale like this that kind of pops up out of nowhere. Again, like Gearbox, Embracer bought Gearbox for over a billion dollars. They bought more studios in this case that are... Gearbox. Argu- yeah, Gearbox is in Borderlands. Gearbox. Yeah. So the ones that made Borderlands, Duke that Nukem made that Forever, um, Homeworld, that god awful game, 
Godfall. Godfall. That's the one. Oh, they no, they published that. They didn't make that. They uh, what's the? There's another one. There was another game. I can't remember what it was called. It came out when Overwatch got released, and it never oh, took Battle off. Battleborn. 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 That's the one. Um, yeah. Alien. That was a quality game. That yeah, one. Yeah. So they're, like they're pretty hit and miss. So obviously, Borderlands is a big winner for them. But um, for a billion. Yeah, they bought them for over a billion dollars, and yet you've got Crystal, you've got Eidos, you've got whatever it was, Square Enix, Montreal, all for less. And Crystal like, Dynamics. Less than a third of that, yeah. And the IP as well. So it's it's ins- apparently it's like 50 franchises they picked up. For 300 million. So I just don't, I don't understand. What? Like it, it, it blows apart the whole value of a studio thing that we'd kind of been going, okay, well, you can kind of, especially when, uh, when we had Insomniac, and then Bethesda, you go, okay, so one studio is worth, apparently worth about this in the eyes of other publishers out there. Then Bethesda rolls along, you go, okay, now there's about 10 studios that have gone for 7 billion, you divide it out, okay, you know, it's, it's somewhere in that sort of ballpark, I guess. But you also can add franchises to it. Activision comes along, and of course there's the Call of Duty money, there's the Blizzard money, all that sort of stuff. And then this just, this is a total lowball in comparison. It just doesn't make sense. Like, they were so desperate to get rid of them that they sold them for in corporate nothing. like high end corporate world they sold them for nothing and all those people let's just hope that they don't have jobs next year yeah there's probably the, the main dude going off. probably the probably the upper, higher ups are going what the hell let's well, just hope the NFTs man. don't work they're probably going to oh these NFTs will do this we can sell this to one person and do this and, and I thought brilliant that's a great idea no yeah. it's not it's a stupid idea it's a silly I idea. I just, I don't get it. It doesn't make any sense. They obviously want to double down on their, I, their Japanese I honestly stuff, hope, but that's not even going I, well. I honestly hope if Bracer Group say, hey, you can have it back for a billion dollars. <laughs> if they change their mind, oh, please, no, 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 fine. Oh, please, can we past. have it back? Sure, here, have a billion dollars. Well, but we'll we take that money and we'll go million. buy another gearbox. Yeah, we'll just go buy something else. But... Um, it's so uh... yeah no but like even, like they want to focus on, I mean outside of the NFT stuff they obviously want to focus on their Japanese side of things but that's not even going well they got they worked with Platinum on Babylon's Fall and that's one of the least popular games in the world right now the con- uh, the, the concurrent players on Steam at one point was less than ten and the game came out a month ago ten people ten yeah wow like. It was in single figures for a while. I mean, an indie game, that's embarrassing when an indie game comes in, they get 10. That's... Well, you just feel feel sad for them when it's an indie game. You're like, you've probably put your heart and soul into this and for whatever reason you didn't get marketing dollars or you got buried by some big AAA release, you feel horrible for them. When it's a big big game like this that everyone knew was going to be shit and they were doing a horrible job with, you kind of can't help but laugh a little bit. But you add that to... Did you hear the news that came out this week about... um, Oh, shit. The game that everyone hung it on because the jump button was all the same. It was the same for every. Do you remember that? The, like the jump button was X and Y and A and B. It was basically just everything was the same thing. What? It was made what? by the guy who did Sonic. Well, the kind of created Sh- Sonic. Yuji Naka Sorry. is the guy's name, but I can't think of the actual franchise. I'm trying to search through my phone to find it at the moment because. Is it a popular? Is it a popular franchise? No, it was a brand new franchise, but. Oh, um, so it wasn't, it wasn't Final Fantasy. No. I'm just, Final Fantasy Jump. I'm going to have to just quickly Google UG. Oh, no. And, but he, this is the guy that created Sonic. And anyway, what... what the, orig- find- the original Sonic. Yeah. And he's gone and made a game with all the buttons that jump. Or not all of them. Just oh, A, Bell and B. Wonderworld. Bell and Wonderworld was the game. Do you remember that one? No. Oh, don't. There's probably there's probably good reason why I don't know it. The game was just getting mean to shit for a while there because yeah, like every button on your controller was jump, like you know all of those boom 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 jump. Um, same like it's just, there was all sorts of weird shit with it, and it turned out they laid him off with about six months before the game came out. The music there was all issues with the music that they licensing and stuff, so they just winged it. Like Square Enix is overseeing all that and just allowed all this shit to go wrong. And again, that was an external one that they were publishing, but that didn't make sense. And then, in the meantime, you get uh, Nomura, who does Kingdom Hearts, to work on 50 different games, most of which then take 10 years to come out because he's working on too many games at once. They don't know what they're doing. So As you know, Square you Enix you think they're be maybe... officially become the new EA. Do you, I was oh. going to say, do you think that they're maybe like, you know, 
they've got a sale lined up with another company like they're ready to get bought out but they needed to clear out their western stuff first well just sell good. Just, just sell it for cheap just get rid of it because we're getting ready for a sale you know what I mean yeah maybe it doesn't sounds a bit weird but why would you get rid of all that IP especially Tomb Raider Tomb Raider just Tomb Raider, no yeah. Deus Ex is a little bit the same as well like those two franchises but especially Tomb Raider are massive like a brand new Tomb Raider mm. game will make more than 300 million dollars yeah I, that, that's what I'll scratch my head I go why would you sell Tomb Raider for that's it doesn't make sense and then so a and then they came sell out. off sell off their perfect dark game as well that there seems to be massive problems with already yeah and just sell that off too and God knows what else they're making in Crystal Dynamics. I can't even remember. So Square Enix, when they was when they were presenting everything to investors and all that sort of stuff afterwards, they they sh- they were talking about Tomb Raider and what it had kind of done over the journey, and they said Tomb Raider sold eighty eight million copies, and thirty eight million were though from the remakes. Like that's almost half your like you've put out. Well, not them specifically. They picked up. They picked up Idos for a while there, but like. Tomb Raider, what, there must be 15 games over the years? Close to it? Yeah, close to it. PS1, PS2, and then PS3 games before the the reboot trilogy started. Like, what, 10 to 12 of those games have sold 50 million copies. The the three most recent ones sold $38 million. That was below expectations in their eyes and enough to just go, yeah, all right, we'll just fob off the franchise. Who cares? No no matter. Like, it just doesn't make any sense. Just because because Final Fantasy VII just goes gangbusters and everything else seems to be just rubbish after it like just because Final Fantasy if that was Rockstar saying Red Dead Redemption 2 2 is rubbish because it wasn't as good as Grand Theft Auto 5 that's just the silliest thing you can say it's just everyone likes Grand Theft Auto for some reason just be like everyone likes Final Fantasy more than Tomb Raider yeah because everyone likes Final Fantasy 7 oh everyone says Final Fantasy 7 is the best one except for a couple of people who say Final Fantasy is it 9? 9 or 8 I couldn't remember 9 9 where you just jump around on a rope 1000 times is that that one? I've done that worth it you cheated I cheated but at least you admitted you cheated thank you bots Um, but yeah I got got that trophy and damn it now I can go on and get the platinum Um, yeah so just yeah they're, they're making all sorts of weird decisions and their Japanese side just isn't going that well either so so go figure. Is um, the company run by monkeys? Uh, yeah, actually, like animated ones, NFT monkeys. Yeah, like those ones you see in the memes with yeah. their suits on and just their pressure. They're actually to keep the, the monkeys from the Discovery Channel video clip. You know, you and me, baby, ain't nothing but mammals. Let's do. Oh, it the blood hair, blood hair gang. Yeah. Oh, the blood hair gang's just got it. The, they're just the monkeys. Those, those monkeys. Those exact oh, those monkeys. monkeys. It's not bubbles, is it? Which is. Oh yeah, Dragon Ball Bubbles. That'll be right. Oh, uh, I was thinking, I was thinking Michael Jackson Bubbles, but we'll go with Dragon oh, yeah, Ball okay, Z Bubbles. <laughs> so now that the sale's been done, and we'll ignore Square Enix's stupidity, it's now with the Embracer Group. We did learn it was only about a month ago that there was a new Tomb Raider game coming that was announced anyway, and I think that was maybe to try and add a bit of value to the business. Now that we know what's happened, it was probably to add a bit of value to the the business deal. But like, where do you th- see things at for Tomb Raider now? Like, is this a good thing for Tomb Raider I reckon now Tomb Raider is a go like they'll just go ballistic with it this they'll, point. they'll just go like right we got Tomb Raider make it instead of Square Enix saying nah sorry it's not as good as Final Fantasy 7 we're not making it anymore again 38 million copies across 38 three million. games is huge 38 I know 38 million most Musical artists don't even sell 38 million albums. Individual songs, let alone out. Individual yeah, let alone, songs. Yeah. Uh, in the mod, even the modern era with like streaming, they probably don't get 30 million plays of it of their songs combined, let alone sales yeah. of a single video game. It did just or lost trio the plot. So whatever they're eating, they really got to lay off it. Yeah. Just lay off the soup or subs. I don't know what they eat. Yeah. But I'm with you. I think it. I think it's probably really good for. Like, I mean, especially for Embracer, this is their biggest franchise now. You can maybe put it alongside Saints Row, but I think it's probably bigger than Saints Row still as well. Oh no, honestly, it's probably bigger than Saints Row. Yeah, so a lot of people are probably. So as if you wouldn't just yeah. throw the kitchen sink at it to make sure that yeah. they sell just, as many as they can and get as many made say, as possible. 
Oh yeah, I mean, even Saints Row at the moment, people are when it when the trailer came out, people are disliking it and that. I'm thinking, you idiots, why are you disliking it for? Oh, it's like Grand Theft Auto. Shut your face. Get out. You know, yeah, they didn't know what they were talking about. I'd seen gameplay go, at that point, and I go, knew that wasn't. Yeah. yeah, so go buy another PS5 version of the same game and shut your face. Exactly. What about? Are you a Deus Ex fan at all? Did you try never played, or even the most? Never played ones? it. Like, no, never de- played definitely it. Definitely, at some point, I reckon you'd probably get into. Yeah. Um, Mankind Divide is the most recent one, but if you, like Human Revolution from the PS3 360 period, like they, I reckon you get right into them. But um, I was gonna say, I thought they got bad reviews. Punky, but better. Oh, but better. Yeah, that's not how to do. But I thought for some reason they got not the greatest reviews. No, I could no, be wrong. No, on both that. of them are like at least eighty plus. I think. Oh, well, as I say, where's he? Where's that guy been for the last few years? He's, well, he didn't he just beat off the face. Yeah. Oh, sorry, didn't... sorry. Not as good as Final Fantasy VII. Below expectations. And so Below that's... expectations. Below 38 million copies. Not good enough. Oh. I mean, it definitely didn't sell as many as Tomb Raider, so I understand in that sense. But yeah, they, they scrapped that and... Well, they look, that team put out Guardians of the Galaxy. But that also, below expectations. Like, uh, yeah, they don't know. Hey, hey. Below expectations, yes. You want to know why below expectations? Because they released a rubbish Avengers game before it. Yeah, everyone was so skeptical. Expe- yeah, and I played the. I didn't play the Avengers. I skipped that. But I played Guardians of the Galaxy. It's amazing. a good game. It is an amazing game. I assume tune into the next patched updates where you'll find you'll have yeah, some. We'll talk about it more. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, well, your expectations were low, but it came to Games Pass. I played it, and you know what? I would buy it. Yeah. If it ever came off Games Pass, it's like screw it, let's go buy it because it's a good game. Yeah, it's a great game. Definitely a great people's, game. people's investment. So, I don't, yeah, I mean, who knows what it means for the Marvel licenses? Like, maybe maybe they get a crack in Avengers 2 and get to design it the way they wanted to design it, but I don't know. I think most people, if they see Crystal Dynamics is working on Avengers 2, they're going to go, nah, <laughs> no, we're okay. Regardless of whether it turns out being a 10 or not. And Guardians, like, give me, give me new you, Guardians any day of the week, but I'd like to see Dynamics. All you've got to do. All you gotta do with the Avengers games is put no XP booster and everyone will go, Oh yeah. now you have my attention. Yeah, that's true. No online no online multiplayer, no XP booster, no Spider Man. But it'll be interesting to see if like Embracer can get it, because obviously like the, the talent that made it is now they've got a new home. Square Enix owns the, the license for now. I don't think it like I think they might have licensed it out for the game and then maybe a sequel or whatever, but now that I guess the team's gone, the sequel's probably not happening at Square Enix, does that mean that Embrace can go, hey, we'd, we'd like to get the license so that we can work on a new, you know, a new uh, Guardians game? I don't know. Yeah, Maybe don't say why not. But I'd Maybe say they... SpaceX before that as well. Like, hey, I'll say, being that they are a, was it, a Sweden group. Yep. Maybe they can go to Marvel and for the rights to the game, they can give them some give IKEA them furniture. IKEA. Yeah. Yep. Or give them multiple Allen keys. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> or we'll Ninja make sure or, the next time you buy desks for your office that you won't have the Allen key to build them. Say, not only will you have the Allen key, we'll get someone in to build it for you, so you don't have to look at that silly laid out plan and try to figure out what the hell With goes the where. Dude that's there scratching his head. Yes. Good times. And some meatballs. Um, another one that was interesting, I guess the IP along the way, Legacy of Kane, which I shouted out in our last episode as one of the games for the uh, for the PS1, which we'll touch on all of that shortly. We're not done with that conversation. Oh, dear. Yeah, dear about that. You're all the worst. But anyway... Um, Me? Actually, uh, no, no, hey. you, the internet. Well, you, in part two, you put Croc up as an blame, option. Blame, blame 55% of the voters. Yeah. Close. I had nothing to do with it. I honestly This is thought. why we don't respect you, the community. Shake my fist angrily to anyone. No, we don't. We respect 45% of the community. And the other 55, which is Buddy Watson and all these bots, you can die in a fire. No. <laughs> hey, hey, even I voted for Shane Warren Cricket because I wanted <laughs> it to win. And, we still and I came up with Croc. I even used the dev doc- I even like voted on the Player 2 account and the patched. <laughs> sorry, and the Dev Diary I podcast. Still one, I still couldn't, couldn't get, get over the line. It. Jesus. It's bad. Uh, where are they? Oh, I found them. You okay, pulled so every we'll trick out. Shortly, but. Yes. Like, holy shit. Um, but yeah, Legacy Kane, like, that's great. And, like, the fact that they even shouted that out in the actual announcement suggests that, okay, like, they've clearly got plans for that. They probably know that, like, there's, like, the community actually really wants Legacy of Kane, so that's great. Um, yeah. well, everyone everyone so, keeps joking about Gex, but that'd be great. Crystal Dynamics are the ones that made Gex back in the day. 
be surprised. Who knows? It's just, boom, here we go. Gex is a go. Hey, everyone. We need some people to finish this perfect dark game. Off you go. Yeah. Who knows? Nah, that's not going to happen. Maybe they'll just scrap it and just say, nah, start again. Fix your problem. Phil? Come on, Phil. Yeah, I don't know. What are you doing, Phil? I can't work out what's going on. Nah, no one knows. Not even not even Crystal Dynamics knows by the looks of it, because half of them are left. Yeah. Or... Oh. Now the other half of the whole thing, and we don't we're not gonna get into too much speculation around all this stuff, but what we discussed before when we'd had you know, we'd made predictions about acquisitions and all that sort of stuff is like we'd seen publishers buy other developers. We've seen publishers like Microsoft buy whole other publishers like Bethesda and Activision. But we'd kind of kept away from well, oh, they, you know, no one can do this because they're already owned by blah blah blah. And now we've seen a publisher buy a whole bunch of studios from another one. Yes, so it really opens but- up the door to anything. It does, but we're also happy that. Just uh, go, just go look around first. That's no, okay. We're just glad, or well, Paul's glad too, that, uh, see this thing here, I'll just hold up this 10 cent coin. Yes. Oh, 10 cent didn't go anywhere near him. It d- did not purchase it. Yeah, that, yeah, thank fuck for that. All that did you other hold company. That coin, did you have that coin ready to make that reference to this episode? No, this is actually my screwdriver to get my microphone <laughs> holder out. Tighten it all up. But yeah, it's just, yeah, that's what it's for. Not, I, don't, I don't magically just have a 10 cent coin just go and every time 10 cent comes up. Not like you when you just say the word demo, it just magically appears on screen. Well, he might be a bit delayed because we just kept him off. I wasn't quite but, ready for a demo appearance, but yeah, no, here we, we are. Yeah, no, here we are. And that is, the, and that is all of demo for tonight. Back to, yeah, yeah, back, back to the whatever we're talking about. Back to the show. Um, I'll throw one at you for just that tiny little bit of speculation. Name a studio that you think could just get picked up by someone else who's like they're currently owned by another publisher that someone could come and grab them. I don't know anymore. So Warner Brothers. I don't know what they. Well, they're do. a whole publisher, but uh, Rocksteady. See, I was I was thinking under Warner Brothers as well. I was thinking um nether realm as in the the guys who do oh yes mortal Kombat and stuff i could see them getting plucked out of uh, out of there at this point i could probably see sony trying to do it so they've got the whole fighting thing basically whole, in their backyard yeah. outside of street fighter and, and even then they're, they're buddied buy, up then by then by capcom and then you got all the fighting games that's it no one's got anything left except really abstract indie or double a stuff that just doesn't oh, matter so, so it just brings back dead or alive that no one's seen in yeah years Te- tecmo comes back with dead or alive or, or soul caliber the jiggle, fig, jizzle, jiggle physics for the whole time actually maybe kill instinct or make a resurrection oh, you've, got, you've got to think that xbox is thinking about it considering that yeah all the fighting games are kind of gravitating towards playstation they've got evo all that sort of stuff like this is their chance to have something that you know sony can't have what? and the new xbox killer instinct was really does. good oh yeah it was too yeah it was actually pretty good new, yeah i um, guess it's like nine years old now but it was good back in the day for rare that's new yeah all right let's turn our attention to the votes from last week and we'll discuss the highs and the lows and the disaster just to remind people of the the games that we had last week on the ps2 our games that made the top five were dragon quest 8 beautiful joe SOCOM, Need for Speed Underground, and then the vote that we went to the community with was Sly Cooper versus Burnout 3. Burnout 3 take down one with 69% of the votes. Vote. Nice. On the PS1 oh, yeah, I'll, side... I'll pay, I'll pay that one. I'll pay yeah. that one. Well, there's... Yeah, we've got, we've got to respect the 69 as well as it comes through. But um, on the PSP side, we had um, GTA Chinatown Wars... Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker, Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII, Monster Hunter Freedom Unite, the uh, PSP Monster Hunter, and then we had a vote between Daxter and Crash Tag Team Racing with 67% of the vote. Daxter I'm won that disa- one. I'm disappointed in those 67% of people. But here's where the real disappointment comes in, and we've, we've already flagged this a little bit. The PS1, <sighs> we... we I mean, you even knew what was going on and knew how I'd kind of sta- uh, was trying to stack the deck, forecasting a win, and then it blew up in my face. We had Abe's Odyssey, Legacy of Kane, Ape Escape, Dave Mira Freestyle BMX, and it's almost as though we had too many 
sporting games, quote unquote, sporting games with Dave Perry being in there because or we, we did... just thought, or we just thought this was an absolute. It was going to be a landslide for sure, and because we had didn't Croc work. going head to head with Shane Wall Cricket ninety nine, and in the most votes of any of the, like receiving more yeah. votes than any in any of the things, we got some engagement with that one thanks to I think both of us kind of shouting out what the fuck's going on here, and it just seemed to encourage people more. Croc with fifty nine percent of the vote beat Shane Wall Cricket ninety nine. So, internet, you're the oh worst. Oh dear, oh dear. But yeah, that's that's the. Uh, the library sorted out there for the PS1, PSP, and PS2 in the PlayStation Plus stuff that will start in about a month. Sony, I hope you're oh. listening. Um, I hope you are listening to us and not the community here, so you'll pick Shame or Cricket, not Croc. But just um, so just think of it like this: think of that. Was it fifty-seven percent? Sony, make sure you listen. Sony, so Sony, as that fifty-seven percent, that's Square Enix. All right, they're idiots. You don't listen don't to listen them. Don't listen to idiots. Yes. So you go with the forty-three percent. They're the smart ones. I, I'd almost just say like, we'll, we'll brand these people who voted for Croc as terrorists. Like we don't curtail the terrorists. I think not terrorists. We just um blackmail them for life. Yeah. Okay. Of any other votes. So if we take that all away, we ban all of them. Shame on cricket wins. I, I also by, just by DQ. talking about the engagement side of things already. Our patched listenership has also spiked consider like all episodes have gotten a ton of love since this <laughs> since last week's episode went up. So clearly people were into the vote and then they've gone diving into the, the back catalogue all three hundred and something episodes over the years. So do we need to bring up more voting? More engagement So, so are we so we're now become a a gaming democracy. It's just, it's just you a this or that show, that's all that matters this or that next week top 5 60 Nintendo games oh, we already done that didn't we yeah we did we did a sub, yeah, something, something with that something with like that. We'll, we'll just do a little search if we're ever in doubt oh shit we've already done that topic so we'll, we'll wrap things up there on that really disappointing note um, in fact it's just been a disappointing episode all out thanks to thanks to Square Enix and their bullshit and then then you the, the watcher slash listener letting us down there with uh, Shane Warren versus Croc I think I think the I think the um, listening count's gonna go down after next week. Yeah, we're just we've, there. We've insulted we're, no, not, me, too much. not me. Not me. Not me. Not me. I'm I'm moving away from Paul. Paul has been insulted. Is the uh, new host of Patched. He's gonna save this show because I've just done my best to antagonize. Well, Paul's got a, Paul's got a, Paul's got other Paul's got other podcasts to do anyway. Yeah, from what he tells me, he's you'll learn talking about to you. The internet will learn about that soon. Um, I don't know if you'll hundred percent be to your taste, but come along with the for the ride it may not be your sort of show slash topic well it depends if there's a poll Tune about dev dory is always always going to be there for you well it depends if there's a ps last week <laughs> if there's a ps1 poll about croc and shame or cricket i think everyone's just going to come people will come come in people will just come they'll come we'll like just pull just poll let's just uh let's just for the question rest of the, of the year just let's po- just, just let's just have a battle between two ps1 games and just See who the winner is of every week. We just come up with a game every week. Yeah, we both come up with a game, set it as a poll, and we build a library of games out of it for some for something. Or we just go from random consoles and just pick a game and battle it. Yeah. All right. Question of the week. We'll both we'll both bring a game every week. We'll pick we'll pick a console, and then the next week we'll bring two games, and we'll leave it to you, the internet, to decide. Maybe we can pitch you all. We'll have a bit of fun with it. We'll see how we go. In the meantime, so, we'll wrap that episode so we up. Can- so we're going to have a pitch of the worst PS3 game we ever played. That we won't do that. We could do that. Ball and Wonder Wonderworld versus... What's another worst, really gaming, game? worst gaming franchise of all time. Most disappointing gaming game of all time. Yeah, we could go down this path. That could be a lot it, of fun. I would say both of us could do the same thing. It's just Mass Effect Andromeda as our <laughs> most disappointing. Uh, see, I don't bundle it there, but I, I get it. All right, we'll wrap things up there. If you like this episode of Patch, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. All the buttons down below. Hit the notification bell. That way you're alerted to every new video the moment it goes live. That includes Patched, Player 2 Plays, Game of School, and a whole bunch more. Visit the website, player2.net.au, for reviews, previews, opinion pieces, news, features, links to the podcast series, Patch, the Player 2 Pixcast, and Dev Diary. Uh, we referenced last episode that there was a review discussion going up. That is now live on the Patched podcast feed as well as YouTube, dedicated to Trek to Yomi. 
Um, so join myself and Matt Houston as we talk about that one in depth. We're on Patreon, patreon.com slash player2au, kicking a few bucks, lower tiers early access, high tiers monthly episode exclusives, and finally, Twitter. Matto? Matto underscore Phil. Paul James Games for me. The website is player2au. And until next week, you morons, Croc is the worst. See ya. You fools! You fool! It was a fail-safe poll, we thought. <laughs> it's meant to be foolproof. You fucked it still. Bye. <laughs>